Hello everyone. In the prior sessions, we looked at how to account for the cost of an asset when we initially purchased this asset. Then we learned about how to allocate the cost of this asset over its useful life. This is where we discussed depreciation. We also discussed how to account for subsequent expenditure when we spend money on this asset as we are utilizing this asset in operation. In this session, we will discuss what happened to this asset at the end of its useful life. So when an asset is no longer useful, a truck, a vehicle, a warehouse, or has no market value, it might be discarded or sold. What is discarding means? It means the company is basically throwing away the asset because it cannot sold the asset or repurpose the asset. That's one way to get rid of an asset at the end of its useful life. Or the asset can be sold. Well, if the company sold this asset, they must have either a gain or a loss on the sale. Usually when they discard it, they usually also have a gain or a loss because when they remove the asset, they have to remove the asset, remove its accumulated depreciation. So in this session, we need to learn how to first compute the gain or the loss when we either discard an asset or sell it, remove the asset from the books, remove its accumulated depreciation because those two accounts comes together. When we have an asset, we have an accumulated depreciation. If the asset is gone, the accumulated depreciation is gone. We learn about how to compute either a gain or a loss. The whole journal entry, sometimes we might have to pay cash to get rid of the asset. We, we have to take care of this. Sometimes we receive cash if we sell the asset. So the first thing we do is we look at the steps, how to do this step by step. Then we look at various scenarios through journal entries. And at the end, we'll work a multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. First, we would look at the steps for disposing or selling of plant assets. The first thing we have to do before we dispose or sell of a plant asset is to make sure the depreciation is up to date. Now, in financial accounting, most of the time, most of the time, you will be giving the accumulated depreciation as of the disposal date. But if you, if you are not giving this piece of information, you want to compute the depreciation up to the disposal date. What do I mean by this? Let's assume you were told depreciation at the end of year five, I, I'm sorry, accumulated, let's assume accumulated depreciation at the end of year five was 30,000 for the sake of illustration. And the problem they told you, the asset was disposed of half of year six. So what does that mean? It means you have to book an additional half a year of depreciation before you dispose of the asset. Why do you need your accumulated depreciation up to date? You need it up to date because you need to have your book value up to date. Now, why do you need to have your book value up to date? Because from the book value, you are going to compute either a gain or a loss on this disposal. So the first thing is, is my depreciation up to date? Often time in financial accounting, it's up to date. Two, remove the disposed asset. So assets will have a debit balance. So their, their balance is a debit. So if you have an asset, it would always have a debit balance. To remove it, you would have to do what? You have to credit. You have to credit to remove the asset. So we credit the asset and you have to, to remove accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation has a normal balance of a credit. To remove it, you will debit. So you will always, always, always have a credit to an asset and debit to its accumulated depreciation when you dispose or sell an asset. This is how it works. Then if you received cash or if you paid cash, you would either debit cash 
or credit cash. Sometimes you might have to pay cash to get rid of an asset. Sometimes, oftentimes, you're going to receive some cash for it if you get anything for this asset. Then you determine whether you have a gain or a loss. Remember what I told you? First, compute the book value to determine whether you have a gain or a loss by comparing the book value to the amount received. Do we know what the book value is? Well, the book value is the cost of the asset minus accumulated depreciation. So the book value is what's in this num what's in this account minus what's in this account. So the asset minus its accumulated depreciation. This will give us the book value. Now, if the book value happens to be equal to the amount of money that we received, so if we sold an asset for the sake of illustration, if the selling price was 12,000, and the book value is 12,000, we have no gain, no loss. If the selling price was 14,000 and the book value was 12,000, we have a gain of 2,000. The gain is a credit. It's like revenue. It increases our assets. If we sell the asset for less than its book value, so if the selling price was 10,000 and the book value is 12,000, now we have a loss of 2000 the loss is a debit you could either have it a gain or a loss for any particular transaction the best way to illustrate this is to take a look at an example example of disposing or selling of plant asset for the sake of this illustration we would look at a company with a cost of 8000 immediately when you say the machine has a cost of 8000 it means the asset this machine has a debit balance of 8000 and accumulated depreciation of seven immediately say the accumulated depreciation of seven and the machine is disposed of January 2nd we're gonna assume that our depreciation is up to date immediately what you say you would say since my depreciation up to date let me compute my book value my book value is a thousand which is the difference between the asset and the accumulated depreciation now the company disposed of the machine and received nothing in return so the first scenario is they just throw it away somebody took it they did not have to pay them the other party did not pay how do we record this entry well we have to credit the asset credit the machine we have to credit the machine 8000 and we have to debit accumulated depreciation as i told you this would always this would always exist and every time we sell an asset we have to credit the asset and debit its accumulated depreciation. Now, in this situation, what did we receive? We receive zero versus a book value of a thousand. Therefore, we have a loss of a thousand. We debit loss of a thousand. Always make sure the entry equals total debits of eight thousand equal to total credits. So here we discarded the machine for nothing. Let's change the scenario. We sold this asset for $800. The same asset, we sold it for $800. Again, we have to, let's go back and start with the easy part. Credit the machine, debit its accumulated depreciation. So we have to credit the machine of eight, I'm sorry, credit the machine and debit its accumulated depreciation. Why? To make the machine go down to zero, to make accumulated depreciation go down to zero. In this scenario, we received 800 cash. Now we could compare the cash of 800 to the book value. Remember, the book value is 1,000. The difference is 200. We received 200, 200 less than the book value. This is a loss. So remember, the book value is 1,000. What happened if we receive exactly $1,000 for this asset? We have no gain and no loss. We still credit the machine. We still debit its accumulated depreciation. We receive $1,000 in cash. No gain, no loss. 8,000 debits equal to 8,000 credits. Life is good. Now we sold the machine for 1,200. What do we have here? If we sold it for 1,200, you guessed it. We have a gain. A gain of how much? A gain of 200. So, credit the machine, debit its accumulated depreciation. Credit the machine, 8,000, debit its accumulated depreciation, no-brainer. 
then we received cash 1200 cash 1200 is greater than a thousand by greater than the book value by 200 therefore this 200 is recorded as a gain and the gain should be actually this this is a, there's a mistake here the gain should be a credit the gain should be a credit of 200 and make sure always make sure 8200 equal to 8200 let me make sure the other ones were correct yes the other ones were correct uh, what should you do now you want to go to farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice exercises lectures that's going to help you whether you are a financial accounting student cpa candidate cma candidate invest in yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe